Hey uh, YouTube, Monkey here. So today we're going to be building a new computer, um, custom built, and I'm going to show you each part, uh, the approximate cost, and I will have links to each of the items uh, below when I post this video up. Alright, so as you can see over here we've got the computer case. Now it really doesn't matter what kind you go with, you just want something that, well the newest one is USB 3.0 um, and this is a full ATX case. It's got the power supply on bottom which is always a bonus. Um, I hate it when they're on top. Like this one over here, which is why we're going to be moving my computer into that case. Let's see, what are we going to be putting inside of it? <clears throat> well, the, the first thing you got to find is a motherboard. And we decided to go with the Crosshair V Formula Z, and it is an Asus motherboard. Uh, Let's open it up. It's really a sharp looking motherboard. We decided to go with the AMD FX8350. It's an 8 core, 4.0 gigahertz, with a 16 megabyte cache. Uh, and it's, it's really a great processor. Uh, working with the Asus uh, motherboard, it's nice because it can work really high performance or you can go power saver and run all the way down to just one core if that's what you want. Um, the other great thing about Asus is you can overclock and it, it comes with built-in software to overclock your processor which is really nice but the problem is with overclocking uh, draws more power and hence more heat so you gotta, you gotta be careful when you're doing that as well. That is another reason we want a big case so we can put the fans in there, we can do a water cooling system if we want when you do a smaller one, it's less airflow and it gets really compact in there. This one right here is a bit bigger and it's a really nice case. It's what I had before, uh, before I switched to the small one that I ended up not liking. From there, we're going to show the RAM we got. We decided to go with the Vengeance Courser uh, DDR3, uh, two 8 gigabyte sticks. Uh, for a total of 16, um, which obviously we can put two more. Um, when you do expand your RAM, you do want to check on a couple things. You want to make sure that the frequency, this one is 1600 megabytes, or megahertz rather, and the timing. This, this is 10, 10, 10, 27. Um, now that's not to say that you can't mix and match, but when you mix and match, it's going to work to the lowest common denominator, or the highest common denominator between them. So. If you run this uh, at 1600 megahertz and you put two more in that are 1333s, they're all going to run at 1333. Uh, the problem is you still have to have the timing correct. So you can't run a 99924 with a 101027 or they're going to work at whatever goes divides into those both evenly. Um, so you, you could end up with some, with some serious performance issues. Uh, you need a CD-ROM CD drive, and I'm an Asus fan, so I recommended him an Asus CD-ROM, and this is a, uh, I believe it's a 24 uh, times, but yeah, pretty self-explanatory. We're going to run in Windows 8.1 on this. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm a fan of Windows 7, because Windows 8.1, it, it, it has all the background apps. It's kind of like, kind of like an iPhone in a sense. The apps keep running unless you fully close them out, which causes a problem over time if you never reset your computer because your RAM just keeps getting used up and used up and used up. All these things stack and it gets maxed out. Um, for hard drive, we went with Western Digital, a one terabyte. Um, personal preference, I, I don't really know the difference between the blue and the green, but I do like the blue. Um, so this is what we're gonna go with. Uh, they're fast, they're great, and they're very reliable. Um, a lot better than the Seagate that I have, or that I had before it, it crapped the bed. Uh, for doing a lot of video processing, or video editing, and, and streaming, and all that kind of stuff, you want a nice graphics card. Um, so again, we're going to go with an Asus, we're going with the HD7770, and it's got 2 gigabytes dedicated GDDR5 RAM. Um, it can be overclocked. Let's take a look at this bad boy. So as you can see, it's got dual fans for that, that optimal cooling. After you decide on all your components, you need to get a power supply that's going to handle the handle the load. Um, so we went with a 1050 watt uh, power supply by Kentec. Kentec just puts out some really reliable um, equipment. I've been using Kentec power supplies for years and haven't had a problem yet. Um, now you can get two different kinds of power supplies. Some are one. You can go with one that has everything uh, internally 
uh, soldered in. Or you can get one that, that plug and plays and you plug each one in out here and plug them into your motherboard. Uh, but this just really, it, the great thing about not getting this is you only plug in the, the uh, cords that you need. Um, but getting it like this, it just saves you the hassle of, hey, do I have everything that I need? So this will make it a little, a little easier. And there's, there's enough to, to fully connect everything. Um, <clears throat> you don't want to forget a mouse and keyboard, and this was his own preference. He chose what he wanted. He went with some Keyson gaming gear, and it, it's a decent looking keyboard and mouse. Um, he'll have to let you know what he, what he thinks of it, but 